This is the famous Konza Technopolis. It is the first time horizontal structures are coming up. I'm coming here and I am already impressed. It is literally where Kenya's tech world will be converging. Innovation is uh, at the cornerstone of, of the project. A good number of global tech firms are already investing into this future. We are now part of our pump. Chinese multinational technology corporation Huawei Technologies Company Limited are already here. They have rented a space on the city's headquarters, the Konza complex. Welcome to Kenya's city of the future. Konza Technopolis. The paradigm is continuously shifting. The digital world is fast accelerating. AI within government, I think, could go a long way in improving transparency and accountability and credibility. Sci-fires of yesteryears are rapidly becoming the realities of today. These technological advancements are constantly disrupting world economies. With every advancement in technology, as you make some jobs obsolete, you create more jobs. So how does Kenya plan to withstand these economic shockwaves at a time the flow of information is as quick as sunlight? Well, Kenya is building a place that seeks to place the country closer to the curve. A place that will have tools for the future. We are in the middle of it to ensure that we are able to adopt the latest technology within the country and also in the technopolis. Hey, everyone, My name is Lena. Yeah. says that they want to give a platform for innovations that will have the real impact. Ideas that can make Kenya self-sustaining in terms of food production and science. We've been able to, to work through with the startups and incubators and we've provided that platform and environment uh, that will make uh, the startups and incubators thrive. This city could be a model of what is to come. They are calling it the African Silicon Savannah. A place that can grow and thrive to become a place many will want to live in, sustainable and manageable. Creating it is a challenge, well understood by planners at Konza Technopolis Development Authority. The agency in charge of delivering this dream city from virtually nothing. Um, at the rooftop of uh, Konza Technopolis headquarters, uh, we call it the Cradle Silicon Savannah. The head of business development and innovation, Josephine Dambuki, previously had a run-in with the ecosystem of the Silicon Valley, the largest smart city in the world, located in Chicago, United States. I actually got a working stint in one of the companies there. And uh, I mean, the place is amazing. All these companies, very high net worth, uh, a lot of professionals with the Stanford University just nearby. She has over 12 years of expertise as a technology strategist and is part of the team that is shaping Kenya's smart city. I love to come here many times because First of all, there's a good breath, but most importantly, we also come here to appreciate the progress of the city uh, because from this point, you can see the city almost in a 360 view. And uh, it reminds me of where uh, we started from. I joined Konza in 2020, and uh, when I came here, I think only this national data center was there. There was no roads. All these roads you can see were not there. That building was also not there all of this many of these uh, buildings you can see even the data center was really just starting 
uh, the conference facility was not there, the National Police Command Center, the university, you know, a lot of it was not there. And so when we stand here, we appreciate the progress. And the most important thing is that if you come here after two weeks, you probably see something different from what you had seen before. And for sure, if I come here next month, it will be also quite different from what I've seen today. Now, that is a confidence builder, that the journey of building Africa's smartest city is underway. The core mandate of the Konza Technopolis Development Authority is to construct a city that is most livable in Africa. But more importantly, be Kenya's innovation nerve center. Since construction work began several years ago, Konza has undergone a remarkable transformation and a lot is happening. Before then, this place appeared to have no potential. While well, this is beautiful, as you can see, horizontal structures, traffic lights, and everything that pertains to the digital city are being brought up here. Engineers and builders are busy putting up structures left, right, center. It is what we are calling the future of Kenyan cities. My name is Engineer Francis Kibara Mwangi, a civil engineer at Konza Technopolis. I have been here since uh, 2018 and uh, now I'm uh, on my fourth, fifth year. Uh, happy of course uh, to have uh, participated in both the design and supervision of the works uh, in Konza Technopolis. For a city to be well planned, the horizontal structures are the first thing that usually are usually developed to ensure that um, there are enough roads, the water system is sufficient, and we are talking about the sewer system too is sufficient and digital because right now we are talking about smart cities which are digital cities. Among the things that uh, have of course been uh, constructed in the horizontal infrastructure project is the walkways that you can be able to see here. They are, they are concrete uh, walkways, of course, uh, wide enough to be able to allow people to move and other than motorized uh, means of uh, transport. Uh, like bikes, uh, we are going to have bikes uh, being, driven, uh, being uh, ridden on this place, uh, scooters, other e-cycle uh, type of movements. And this, of course, will have the smart aspect in that uh, they, will, they will be on a lease to use uh, model that uh, will, will come up. Uh, other things that you can be able to appreciate here, of course, uh, is the, uh, the, the pavements that we have here. Uh, as you might note, the pavement is a, bit, uh, is a bit narrow. This is the pavement that will be able to carry the bus rapid transit uh, uh, buses that we have uh, in the city. These are for mass movement of people. After you've uh, come to Konza Technopolis, there will be a parking silo at the gate. You'll be able to park your vehicle there get into the uh, BRTs that will be able to uh, take you around the city. It is said to be a 15 minute city in that uh, you should be able to get any of the facilities that you need within 15 minutes of walking. So we are encouraging people to be able to walk, to be able to cycle so that they can have a different uh, experience within the city. And uh, the city is expected to have a population of 30,000 uh, in phase one uh, and uh, at full build up it is expected to have a population of 240,000. Uh, it is expected that 75% uh, of this population will be resident in Konza, 25% will be, will be transit uh, population. It is about 6 p.m. and construction is going on. I hear they are calling it the dragon but this is a, um, a machine that pumps concrete to the construction site, as you can see there. The Dragon Concrete Pump is one of the technologies being used to ensure efficient and sustainable construction. Stay tuned, I will explain how it functions much later. This is where the police and the security operations of Konza City will be conducted. Actually, it is the security command center. Beautiful, right?
at the heart of this construction site are dedicated engineers, architects and builders working tirelessly to bring this vision to life. Konza Complex, basically the Konza headquarters that uh, we have uh, behind us here. Uh, this was a three-in-one building. It has an office block that is already constructed, uh, occupied by uh, different investors, as well as it acts as our headquarters for Konza Technopolis. Uh, the, uh, the construction in front of us here is the conference facility. My name is Job Abuga, and uh, professionally I'm a civil and structural engineer. I have been uh, five years in the construction industry, and uh, I joined this place in the year 2020-21 January. So there it is uh, one year and uh, five months now. It's 2 p.m. on the second day of my visit to Konza City. <laughs> and these builders have just returned from lunch. <laughs> Some light work out here before they return to their stations. They are erecting structures for Kenya's cutting-edge science university. the Kenya Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, which will serve as the hub for science, research and innovation. The university will be a major catalyst for accelerating Kenyan society's modernization and transformation into a middle-income country by 2030. Uh, a graduate-only university uh, being undertaken by the Minister of Education uh, now the project uh, has kicked off and uh, the contractor is now at uh, 70, uh, is now at 30% complete. Uh, it's still ongoing and we believe that uh, sometime in 2024 uh, we'll be able to complete uh, the project, the construction of the project and we'll be able to uh, start uh, uh, student uh, intake. Uh, we'll be able to do uh, in, the coming, in the coming months so that as the project completes, uh, then we are able to, to intake the students. We are doing structures in which we have the canvas call right behind me, if you can just have a look at it. The other side, we can see that we have the education area where we have education building A and education building B as well. We have the student housing to the furthest end as well, we have the female housing to the further extent as well we are doing the utility earlier so we are, do, are currently doing um, seven structures that are running at a concurrently technology is on display here massive cranes transporting heavy materials such as steel frames and steel bars. Not to mention the Dragon Concrete Pump. As the concrete mixer brings the concrete, it pours the, the concrete into the pump, then the pump is able to employ its own mechanisms to pump the concrete all the way. The concrete pump enables the precise placement of concrete, reducing wastage and increasing productivity. It is a huge construction truck equipped with long articulated boom that pump concrete from a mixer truck to the highest parts of the building under construction. For one, we are using the technology in which we, we can do columns horizontally such that we use the crane to lift them and place them into position. Once this place is done, there will be a lift here. This is where people will be coming in to access 
the upper floors and one of the buildings here are the university. The Science Institute in the Smart City is more than just a collection of buildings. The authority CEO says its construction demonstrates the city's progress. And it's a good feeling when you see that uh, your anchor tenant, that is the university, is actually coming to life and uh, you are able to see the progress every day. Konza Technopolis aspires to be a sustainable lighthouse, effortlessly incorporating green technologies into its core. Planners are utilizing advanced computer models to create a city with a good environment. They want to encourage the breath of wind to come through. Uh, you note the area that uh, has been uh, well uh, uh, graded out there. That's where we are going to have uh, most of the most of the landscaping works. Uh, those are this is a 60 meter wide uh, corridor that has been set aside, of course, for uh, landscaping works. We are also going to have other things like uh, smart kiosks. We are going to have uh, Wi-Fi Wi-Fi hotspots uh, provided in those areas, basically to give a relaxation feel as you are in the city, and uh, to ensure that uh, you can be able to get all those other elements and. Uh, uh, of course, uh, anticipate the challenges that might come up with people uh, trying to build up kiosks and other proliferations that might not be very good for this uh, city. Construction is being done using computer modeling in such a way that blocks and public areas in parks are positioned in such a way that they help create quality circulation. In such a water-scarce location, the challenge is frequently not how to get it, but how to make the best use of what is available. It's the kind of task that appeals to both the daring and the inquisitive. We have trees that have been spaced out at every 10 meters. That's the big trees. Uh, and this, of course, uh, to ensure that uh, they, are, they are sustained, you can be able to see the loop, the, the loop that we have here. This will be used for irrigation purposes. For Kabaria and Kotda, that means creating safe water from west. The process known as water reclamation. Since independence, Kenya has only treated sewage to dispose of waste. But for the first time, Kenya will have a city whose waste will be treated to produce organic fertilizer and water for reuse. And it will all take place at this striking facility just a few blocks from the city. It is a feat of engineering with a footprint the size of three football fields. Konza will be handling its own sewer. No waste will be taken outside Konza city for treatment. Everything will be handled in the city. Nehemiah was part of the team that created the plan for the water reclamation plant and is working relentlessly to make it a reality. This is a city that we are projecting will be housing 240,000 people. So you need a constant supply of irrigation water. That is an unpotable water to keep uh, the environment green and uh, easily uh, habitable. We have a 6,500 cubic uh, tank. Uh, here, water will be flowing continuously to ensure that the tank at the WTP is continuously full. In order for the water reclamation and treatment plans to operate around the clock, the city required infrastructure to transport waste from homes, offices and businesses to the plant as well as reclaimed water to a storage tank in a separate water treatment plant several kilometers away and back to the city, which meant going underground. Kotda has been creating underground infrastructure with precision planned levels for key utilities such as water, natural gas, sewer, electrical tunnels and even telecommunications superhighways since construction began.
These subsurface systems are intended to meet Konza City's needs for more than 100 years to come. But perhaps one of the most difficulties confronting Kenyan cities and towns is maintaining a consistent and safe supply of one of the most scarce resources, water. Rain is frequently the most efficient source of fresh water. However, this is a semi-arid region. Today appears lush and green. But tomorrow will be dry and dusty. So how can you maintain a steady supply of clean water? Planners are looking at a water source close at home, Thwake Dam, located in Makweni County. Thwake Dam, whose construction is projected to be completed in 2024, will provide Konza City with a consistent supply of water, and the city authority is already planning for the future. It is building a state-of-the-art water treatment plant with the aim of pushing the city's water potential a notch higher. Will house different technologies for producing fresh water from its different sources. Water from Dokedam will be going through the whole process at WTP. It will, it will move from the screening stage to pre-sedimentation because it's raw water. Salinity it has uh, raw materials, it has uh, logs, sticks, mud. So that water has to go through the whole process to ensure that it is fit for use. Water from the boreholes, the main item that we will be getting rid of, is the salinity. And that salinity does not need to go all the, through the whole process. It just needs to go to, through the reverse osmosis process and that water will be fit for use. Conventional water desalination consumes a lot of energy. In reality, powering the digital metropolis necessitates a significant amount of energy. So how will Konza City guarantee a steady supply of electricity? We are using green energy. Kenya is doing very well in terms of its energy sources, being hydro and of course geothermal. At Konza we also have a solar park and all the roofs tops for all the buildings will be solar powered. So that means that then you start seeing the sustainability elements coming to it. Konza City is part of Kenya's Vision 2030 that seeks to transform the African country into an economic power. Once completed, it is expected to generate over 200,000 new jobs and contribute 10% to the national GDP once it becomes fully operational by 2030. My name is Enoxicoli and this is the Kenyan Historian.